I paid the boy four pennies for the two mile journey across the city and sent him away. I concealed myself behind a parked carriage and fixed my gaze upon the entrance of the warehouse where the murderer was expected to be. Visibility at street level was poor and where the mist ended and the smoke began I could not say. The late hour brought a bitter cold. There had been little activity, uncharacteristic for workers that operated into the night to meet shipping deadlines, so anyone arriving at this point would certainly be who I was waiting for. The briefest of movements through the mist caught my eye. Someone was lurking in the shadows, but they gave themselves away, only for a second, by inching too close to the light cast by a fire in a brazier. To the left of the warehouse, a second person became apparent when they shifted their weight from one foot to the other. Something was wrong. I was not alone. I became overwhelmed by the sensation of someone behind me. When I turned, my ears were violated by the screech of a whistle. I've got him! Over here! More screeches from the whistle. Men emerged from the mist and rushed towards me from all angles. When they got closer and restrained me, it was clear that they were police. The detective was the next one to speak. We were told we'd find you here. He dropped a match into the bowl of his pipe and puffed. You're under arrest for the murder of your wife. We found her body at your place of work this evening. 